Phil and Sarah Martin, um, who are the co-hosts uh, privately. Um, I hope you're going to enjoy the session. Uh, Vera, first of all, will just outline the, the schedule and format of uh, the workshop. So I'll, I'll hand over to you now, Vera. Vera, you're on mute. Thank you very much, Dina. Um, I've put up the schedule. So um, at one o'clock um, at, at the moment, we'll be um, to have, giving a brief overview of how this workshop came together and the research that fed into it. Um, then, and after that, we'll break out into individual sessions um, that you will have picked when you registered for the workshop. So, so they will be taking place in separate Zoom rooms. So um, you should have the links for, um, in the emails and we'll also put them again in the chat. The first session is either on collaborating with um, organizations of persons with disabilities or working with co-researchers. And then at three o'clock, the second set of sessions are on research during pandemic and other crises and working with children with disabilities. And then at 4.30, we will all reconvene in this room to um, hear our keynote speaker, Dr. Ola Abu Al Ghaib from the UNPRPD, and we'll have some final conclusions to the workshop. Um, so I'll start briefly with talking about how this workshop came about, and that's uh, going to involve a brief introduction to the COVID-19 research network that has been led by the Disability Under Siege uh, program. So I'm Vera Commence, I'm the research fellow on the GCRS F Plus Network Disability in the Siege, and I've been kind of coordinating um, the network. Uh, so Disability Under Siege is a four-year international network project funded by the Arts and Humanities Research Council under the um, Global Challenges Research Fund in the UK. And in September 2020, we received additional funding for work with the UN Partnerships of Rights of Persons with Disabilities. And the aim of that work was to, first of all, assess the impact of COVID-19 on disabled people in low and middle income countries, and then to develop a framework to enable um, countries that were working with the UNPRPD to carry out evidence-based situational analyses of how disabled people have been affected by the pandemic, and then to make recommendations for a disability inclusive uh, recovery. Um, the key findings from the literature review that we conducted um, were that disabled people have been systematically excluded from the pandemic, from pandemic management efforts um, at local, national and global levels and that a disability continues to be framed uh, in medical terms and in individual disabled people's experience are, is often individualized and disabled people are, have been uncritically labeled as vulnerable without, inter, uh, inve, inter, uh, without asking why disabled people are more vulnerable or what are the factors that make them so. And we've also found that in the research there was little to no focus on access to culture, leisure or religion. Um, so it was very much um, focused on the medical impacts. Um, and again, it's not, it feeds back into the medi framing of medical terms and disabled people are not seen as whole person that should be, ha should have access to um, society as a whole. And we've also found that uh, organizations of persons with disabilities have often not been consulted with during the pandemic, but have been instrumental in supporting their members where governments fail to do so. So based on that, um, these findings, we began working with a network of eight separately uh, case funded case studies that were all funded by the HRC. And they were looking at the uh, impact of COVID-19 in specific countries. So we've had a case studies in Ghana and Indonesia, a case study in Nepal, a case study in Palestine, Lebanon and Jordan. Um, we've had a case study in Peru, South Africa, Uganda, Ukraine and Zimbabwe. And these case studies ran for a period of six months um, between March and September 2021. And then as a net, we established a network working together um, and to um, kind of feed off each other, learn from each other. So it was a really exciting network to um, come together and talk about the problems that we were having in the research, help each other out, but also kind of learn from each other's methods and uh, what char characterized the case studies was um, that a lot of them were using very innovative, very creative methods, and a lot of them were using participatory methods. So um, 
we found it extremely helpful as a network to come together and that's why we wanted to create this workshop um, to uh, share that learning and enable more equitable and creative approaches and we've also integrated the uh, a lot of these some of these methods into the framework that we developed for the UNPFD as sort of best practice. So um, now I'd like to invite um, Shawnee Elise, for, um, who's joined us from the Arts and Humanities Research Council, um, to just say a few words about why the research um, has been funded and um, kind of the importance of participatory and creative research to the AHRC. Thanks, Vera. So yeah, thank you. Um to Vera and Dina to, for inviting me um, to this workshop today. I'm really glad to be here. Um, it's been really great over the last year to see the progress that has been um, made through Disability Under Siege, along with the other projects that we've um, funded in this area that Disability Under Siege are, um, are coordinating. Um, and it's been great to see some of the interesting learnings that are coming out of these projects. Um, Disability research continues to be an important area that AHRC would like to engage with more. And as such, we are hoping um, to continue work in this area going forward. Um, and we're particularly interested in and around the distinctive contributions that the arts and humanities research um, can bring to achieving disability inclusive, sustainable global development for example, around um, creative methods and participation, which we've started to see through these um, projects. Um, it's worth noting as well that AHRC as a funder are also committed um, more widely to EDI and equitable partnerships, and we're open to continuously improving in this area. We're currently looking into ways in which we can design our research course to be more inclusive and more um, accessible uh, things such as ensuring sensible timelines um, when we're designing our calls. Um, as I just said, we have a wider commitment to EDI and I'd just like to highlight that UKRI has a draft um, EDI strategy currently um, under consultation on our website and I'll put the link in the chat in a minute but that's open for anybody to, to read and um, and comment on through a survey. So I'd encourage um, people on this call to have a look at that. Um, also, um, oops, sorry, I've lost my um, point. Also, um, just in line with um, continuing this area forward. So as I said, we hope to have more funding um, in this area, but we can't promise anything as yet, but we, we're working towards that. But I'd just like to bring everybody's attention to our um, responsive mode route. So um, that is constantly open for new applications and we'd welcome them in this area. So again, I'll put the link um, in the chat. But thank you again for inviting me, Vera and Dina. I look forward to being part of the discussions. Mute. Sorry, Vera. Thank you very much, um, Shawnee. Uh, before we move into the individual sessions, um, we'd just like to take a moment to um, acknowledge um, the absence of one of the projects that has been involved in the network, um, and that is the Ukraine case study um, led by Dr. Sorry, I've just lost the presentation. <laughs> there we go. Um, really sorry about that. So that, uh, we'd like to. Um, acknowledge the absence of our partners from the Ukraine project, um, which is led by Dr. Kirill Sharapov at the University uh, at Edinburgh Uni Napier University, together with the National Assembly of People with Disabilities and the National Academy of Sciences in Ukraine. 
and they are unable to be with us today due to the um, horrific and unjust war in Ukraine. Um, we stand in solidarity with Ukraine always. Uh, so before we move on to the um, individual workshop sessions, we would like you to uh, would like to ask you all to observe one minute silence with us in support of the Ukrainian people. So um, we'll start now. Thank you. sharing a funding link for an organization that directly supports people with disabilities in Ukraine. So this is just if you're able to support them, please consider doing so. Um, and we'll now move on to the um, individual breakout sessions. So um, we'll have about what's 10 minutes to move into the breakout sessions um, before we start there. Um, so you'll have the links in the um in the email that was sent out yesterday and i will also just put them again in the chat thank you very much and we look forward to seeing you in the sessions <laughs> 